Hey, morning guys. I'm trying to test out my new D710 GA Kenwood. And uh, the plan is to set up our mobile station with APRS. I've got a five and a half foot um, VHF UHF antenna mounted to the ladder on my RV. And this is the new radio. I bought it for my 39th birthday, which happens to be today. And I did a uh, test message from my handheld. And the goal for today is to see if we can continue to send messages while I'm in the Tonto National Forest back to here. Uh, I also put a small temperature gauge in here uh, because it does get hot in Arizona. And then I'm running off everything off a 12 amp hour, uh, 12 volt battery. And I'm just curious to see how many amps we'll be drawing on this setup. All right, guys, so I'm going to hit the trail and I'll see you up. Hey, morning, guys. I'm the tech prepper. So I decided to uh, come out to the Tonto National Forest and test some equipment uh, on Labor Day. So hope everybody's having a safe and fun Labor Day. And uh, even if you're not into uh, tactical communications or ham radio, I think there are a lot of lessons here for preppers. So I have been testing out my gear uh, since I've been getting into this new area called APRS and I'm finding a lot of failure points and The only way that you discover those areas where you're bound to fail is by testing your gear and constantly improving so Before I left the house. I uh, deployed my brand new uh, Kenwood D710 GA It's a 50 watt dual band radio and the reason why I bought it was that I needed something more than 5 watts and I wanted something that I could use as a base station in my home on two meters and 440 but also take in the rv or mount in the jeep the other reason why i bought that radio is that it has probably the best in class support for aprs and gps so as a tactical communication station it is perfect and prior to me getting that i have been uh, using the moby link d with uh, either my baofeng or my yesu radio and then a mobile phone with APRS Droid. Um, I'm still using this unit uh, while I'm mobile or in the field, but I'm curious to see how well uh, that setup I have uh, works. So in the intro, uh, I kind of walked you through uh, the setup I have there, and I'm hoping now that the antenna is a bit higher up on top of the RV, and I almost have line of sight. There's a mountain right in the way. I wanna see if I'm able to beacon my location and send messages from my handheld because my goal uh, for this exercise is to really test tactical communications on the trail and more specifically am i able to send my gps location to that unit and i really don't know if it's going to work so i sent a message at seven different locations uh, the first one was at the trailhead and then i took about five more on the way up here and then a seventh one on the uh, plateau i'm at 761 meters and uh, while I can see some houses on the ridge line, I don't quite see mine. Uh, in fact, there's a small hill obstructing uh, the view. So I'm not terribly confident that the uh, messages are going to go through. But that's the reason why I came out and wanted to test this. And that's really the whole point of this video uh, for preppers and non-preppers is it's great to have the equipment. It's great to know how to use it but does it really work in the way that you want it to work when you need it to work? And my biggest fear is um, I'm out here by myself. I rarely see anybody, especially in the summer. I haven't seen anybody out here for at least five, six weeks uh, when I come out. And if I break a leg, um, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way to, um, to make contact to get the right support. Um, the other reason why I come out here, it's an opportunity to refine your gear. And uh, I've been using the handheld with the MobiLink D. And one of my biggest complaints with the MobiLink D is the, is the case itself. And the case has a button that is easily tapped. And uh, either you can bump it and stop beaconing your position, or you can bump it by accident, like overnight, and it'll just run your battery down. And that's what happened to me last night. So I had to charge it on the way up with my uh, cell phone uh, battery pack. So um, all I did was cut a piece of plastic and put it over the top of the rubber band and it seems to 
solved it. If the guys at Moby Link D are watching, it'd be fantastic to fabricate a new case. In fact, I may even send you guys an email with some of my thoughts based on the amount of field experience I've had uh, in the last few weeks uh, with this unit. Um, all right, guys, so what I'm going to do is head down the hill, and we'll see how many messages made it through. My guess is zero, but uh, that's why we come out and practice. And then uh, we'll go ahead and just film a 30-second clip of which one's made it through. Um, but outside of that, the plan for the next few videos, uh, since I'm still waiting on solar equipment and can't do that video, uh, I'll do one on the Berkey. We've had that for a few weeks, just waiting on some water testing results. And then I do want to do a few more videos on the Kenwood D710GA. Uh, I've got some first impressions. I've got uh, some nuances I found with the rig. I'll show you what I've, how I'm using it for home use, mobile or home use. And then uh, in a few weeks from now, I'm going to go ahead and mount it in the Jeep and it will be my uh, portable setup. All right, guys, so we're back in the rig. And as you can see here on the screen, it still has our test before leave. I'll go ahead and look at all of the messages in a second. We're up to 96 degrees Fahrenheit in here now with 28% humidity. And uh, let's see how many amp hours. So 2.73 amp hours drawn since we left. So that was about uh, three hours ago. There we go. And let's go ahead and let's go into go back yeah and as you can see here that was our last message was the test before leave all right guys so as I had thought this was a failed experiment uh, I'm gonna keep on trying a few things and keep everybody posted be strong be safe and be prepared